Okay, so Grok, Elon Musk's AI model, was finally released to Premium Plus subscribers on X this morning. It just went out a few hours ago. Um, and you'll see that my uh, interface looks exactly the same. Let's go to home here. And uh, all right, so you can see everything's typical here. Here's my posts. Um, I'll show you where uh, Elon uh, basically announced it uh, this morning. It was like at uh, 5 a.m. Uh, hang on here. Uh, this is after, there we go. Um, Grok AI is now rolled out to all X Premium Plus subscribers. This is two hours ago. Uh, so I had to update, I had to refresh my um, desktop and on my phone, I had to hard close the Twitter app and reopen it. Some people have had to uninstall and reinstall. So the rollout is still a little bumpy, um, but I just wanted to walk you through what this looks like. So when you click Grok, this is a previous example. Hang on, I'll, I'll clear this out. There doesn't seem to be a way to, uh, to, there's no history, chat history that I can find yet. This is very early days. Elon said, listen, it's gonna be, it's going to be bumpy. It's going to be imperfect. But this is the this is the interface, right? So um, like a lot of the other models, they give you some basic uh, prompts to get you going. The default is in fun mode, okay? So notice that you can do regular mode or fun mode. And again, fun mode is meant to be a little sarcastic, a little vulgar. And I already sort of made a mistake in forgetting to switch this. I'll show you that in a second. But let's just say roast me grok. So it's going to review my Twitter feed, which is this is one of the interesting aspects of this AI model. It, it has access to X or Twitter. Um, so whether that's a good thing or bad thing, um, you know, the information and things that are said on this platform. So, um, you know, use it wisely, I guess is what I'd say. So um, I've already done this once, this exercise once. Um, it goes through my Twitter feed. You can see, uh, picks up I'm a law professor and uh, makes fun of me for being a, probably a, a law professor that uh, no one you know wants to take. Um, I'm challenging the sort of establishment of becoming a lawyer. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting. It's funny. Um, I don't know how useful it is, uh, but it's fun and that's okay. That's the point of these models when we first start using them. It's okay to not be overly serious and stress test these things. Like there is some entertainment value in these and thus why we have a fun mode. All right, I'm gonna take you through a couple of the examples that I just grabbed screenshots for. Um, again, uh, showed you this, showed you this where it is right here. Um, this was when I did roasted me earlier. Now it's a completely different from what I showed you right here. Same prompt, um, the, probably an hour ago and, uh, a completely different reply. Good news is that means it's not formulaic. It's, it's, it's going to have, uh, a different sort of response at different times. Um, again, that's good or bad. You could say, well, lack of consistency is a bad thing with these things, or you could say, well, no, it's creative and we should embrace that. I'm in the latter camp. I think these, once we learn how to manage its creativity, it unlocks serious power. But if they were overly restricted, then, you know, um, kind of get boring actually and become like everything else. Okay, so I am going to show you here. Yeah, this is the exact same preview. All right, so uh, sorry, just trying to get things organized here. So I took a screenshot. So I just basically said, tell me about recent advances in AI in the legal profession, uh, what has occurred in the last two days. So it goes through and it lists, and if you read this, let me get this out of the way, basically says there's an article on this, there's an article on that and all that. And I'm like, wait, okay, there's no links or anything like that. So I then ask, well, in your response above, you know, five articles. Oh, I made them up. The articles are not real. I was just trying to be funny. I was on fun mode, okay? And that I kind of forgot. It's a brand new tool to do that. And so that's what I got. So 
when I then say, um, this is the exact same one, I think. Let me just make sure. Yeah. So then I switch to regular mode, exact same prompt, and then it draws up these things. Now, um, and if you click on this, you can see the Council, Chicago Council on Science and Technology, the, the, the Twitter post. So that's the Twitter handle. It actually will link it down here below. You click on it, and it brings it up in the side panel so you actually see the resource. Um, so it's interesting. Now, I haven't done this extensively enough to know, is that a function of regular mode? Or was it just random? Just like when I asked it to roast me, it had a completely different response. I'm going to get into that. My bet, or my guess, is it's both. When it's on regular mode, you stand a higher chance of getting actual resources. It's going to point to you to the, the X feed. Sorry, I keep saying Twitter. Um, and give you actual resources. So that's really good um, and can be very valuable. Is it on point? Did it go through the entire X universe? Because I know there's, there's two major legal AI events that have been happening this week, and there's been hundreds of posts on it. It didn't pick those up. So it's access to real-time X feed. I don't know what the delay is. Uh, this is December 7th, so that was yesterday. So does it have a recency bias? Um, I said the last two days. I, I don't know. Again, this takes some figuring out. This is early. I've been playing with it for literally about an hour. But I, because I know there was two legal AI specific events going on and a lot sort of hitting the X feed, just noting that it didn't sort of pick it up. OK, let's try something else here. Just want to note, i um, just going to stress test this with you. Sorry, it's going to be a longer video. Um, so I asked it again. I had to refresh. So I clicked this up here. I uh, haven't found a way. Maybe I'm missing it to see my chat history with Grok, but it defaults to fun mode. So I immediately had to switch to regular mode. I asked, how many words could I feed into a prompt at one time? It says 2048. I said, is that accurate? Well, then it goes on to basically say, yeah, that is accurate. The current limit for most AI models is 2048 words, which is equivalent to approximately 600 words. Um, okay, little logical inconsistency there. Uh, then it goes on to tell me about a little bit about token count and all that. So. Uh, I, I don't know. Let's. I'm going to test this next and just see how much it can consume. Okay, so I took the standard anonymized MSA that I typically use when I first encounter a new AI model. This is 21 pages. You can see it's it's a it's a true MSA. I've just removed any identifying information. I've selected all of this and I've basically put it into the prompt window. I haven't run this, so I have no idea if this is going to work yet. And I just say, can you analyze this MSA for any inconsistencies? I mean, that's a very broad prompt. I don't even know. Well, it seems to have accepted all of that. Let's see what it's doing. Uh, it didn't error out 21 pages of an MSA. It's, it's thinking. You can see it down here. Um, okay. Then a Vogon's ego. Interesting. Our apology. So it did error out. Interesting that it still injected... Um, a, uh, a sense of humor, even though it's on regular mode, please provide a more manageable version. I'll say, what is a manageable version? I don't know. Let's see if it can understand exactly the context of this conversation. Um, it does not. It's basically trying to explain what a manageable version is of anything in life and then goes to an MVP. Okay, let me uh, pause and let me try to uh, figure this out or, or come up with another test. Okay, so I just went into that MSA. I grabbed the data protection clause, and this is a typical sort of scenario I run. Um, you'll see my prompt. I'm just going to cut and paste that excerpt here. Go ahead and pause because I got to sneak. Okay. And I basically give it this, like, listen, this, this is an MSA we're being asked to sign. We're only providing online access to educational uh, platforms or programs. We're only going to collect first names and then email addresses. And I ask, can you review the section and identify any overly broad or burdensome language that we might, might want to negotiate on? So, again, first time I've run this, let's see. 
Um, it's starting to analyze. Uh, this will be good. I'm going to pause this so I can sort of ingest this and see how well it does. Okay, it did a fairly decent job. I mean, this is not going to replace a lawyer anytime soon. Uh, but okay, it, 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 it did okay, I'll just say. I've seen worse. Um, so let's just test how it can draft an email. So based on this, I'm just going to say, can you draft an email that identifies these provisions and suggests new language? I am not doing deep, robust prompting here. I'm doing very basic prompting because I just want to see how well it reacts to that. Um, I'll get into sort of engineering some prompts and figure out what its specific prompt uh, lexicon is, if you will, and what really works and all that. But here we go. It knows it's got to draft an email. Um, very nice. It's appropriate. Um, this isn't doing too bad. I'm reading, sort of doing speed reading. Um, Listen, this is not horrible. Um, this is not horrible by any stretch. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But my gosh, it's serious, which is good. Didn't inject any humor that I can see. It's a very well-structured email. Um, one thing I'll know, I don't know why it keeps giving me down here. I guess this is giving me resources to consider or draw from, or maybe it. this is where it drew from some of its logic, if you will. Um, but this is giving me some pretty good click through just if I wanted to get deeper into um, learning how to draft this and what the language is and all that. I mean, I, I kind of do like this. This at least takes you down a path where you can educate yourself a little bit more on this. And it's not saying these are the definitive sources. Um, this is a nice feature. I like this. I could see as I get more used to this and comfortable with how to prompt it that this might be really, really helpful. All right, let me try one more thing. I'm going to pause and come back to you. I'm just going to do a fun one here, kind of fun. Yeah, the curiosity. Uh, ask it to provide uh, a list of the top 30 highest engagement X accounts of lawyers. If I want to know, you know, what lawyers are on here that kind of just blow it up um, time and time again with their engagement, um, let's sort of see what they come up with. It's not giving me uh, – trying to – Okay. So I said top 30, it gave me three. Not sure if it just stopped reading after that or not. Um, so I don't know these. So let's just see April 3rd. April 3rd is the tweet. Um, 15,000 followers. I mean, that's not extraordinary uh, here. And um, legal correspondent at Law 360. Okay. And I'm just going to look at uh, her tweets to see what kind of engagement um, she gets. 1.9, 4.6, 4.5, 4 4.5. I'm looking at this number right here, by the way. That tells me the engagement. 1K, yeah, I mean, 91K. Um, oh, good law project. Uh, that got some, some play. That's just a repost. Okay, I, again, nothing against this uh, person. I wouldn't call it the highest engaging uh, X account of a lawyer. Um, same here. 30K followers. So, yeah, interesting. Um, doesn't really know how to pull, which I could see because this is like kind of breaking the analytics model on the back end of this, which quite honestly is what advertisers pay for. So, Makes sense that there's no backdoor into the back end of X platform to analyze people uh, and their accounts uh, because there's a whole revenue model behind that. But anyway, I thought I'd test it. Okay, I thought I'd wrap with one more quasi legal one. Uh, for HR or legal leaders considering if and how to write a Grok use policy, um, list out creative and informative features as well as creative and helpful benefits of a webinar. Uh, focusing on creating a Grok use policy. So there's a couple of asks in here. I'm asking it to focus on itself. Um, I honestly could see people trying to figure out how to write, incorporate Grok because it's not it's not a standalone like OpenAI or Microsoft Copilot. I know they're not technically standalones, but like this is attached to X, which I think most organizations have access, allow employees to access, whereas others have closed down access to openai.com and others. So I'm just curious as we sort of get into this era of Grok, 
whether or not there's going to be a, a slight different language in terms of organizations and how they might define this. Um, this so it just picked up the webinar. Um, this is not talking about how to write a Grok use policy. I mean, uh, it kind of does. Um, so maybe I'll just take uh, this part. For each other, if not, please, please provide some ideas. Okay. Again, I'm doing basic prompting here, folks. Nothing too extensive. I'm just trying to start to peel back the layers. I'm on layer one or two of this, uh, this onion, so to speak. Um, okay, so it's going to write a nice guide for best practices and ideas on how to write a Grok use policy. Um, I'm going to ask it, uh, give me a really good way of describing Grok as compared to <laughs> and knowing Elon, I can only imagine this might get some humorous response here to OpenAI, Microsoft, Copilot. I'm sure I spelled that wrong. No, um, there we go. Uh, Anthropics, Claude. and Google's Gemini. Let's see what it does here. Uh, describing as compared to, all right. Let's see what this comes up with. Um, gonna pause it here quick. <laughs> uh, I just, I just, you gotta love Elon. Um, he found a way, even this, I'm in regular mode. Um, just. This is this is pretty funny response. Is it useful? No, but did it make me laugh? Yeah, I mean, even threw in just some self, I'm not self-deprecating humor, but uh, it, it threw in some humor that is um, that's funny. Uh, it really is, but it did actually helpful provide resources here, right? Other people that have tweeted on the difference of Grok and the other ones. So while Grok's response in itself is funny, um, it did provide some useful responses. So listen, uh, sorry, this is almost an 18 minute long video, but it's a, a first look at Grok for, uh, with a legal sort of uh, mindset and point of view on. Um, is it worth paying for the premium subscription at this point, which I forget what it is, 20, $30, I can't remember to be honest with you, versus uh, plus subscribers for OpenAI. No, not yet, but knowing Elon and the team, this is going to rapidly advance. He's going all in on this. Um, I would say he's irritated at the direction that OpenAI took. He's irritated at Google, which goes back years, and the whole reason why Elon founded, co-founded OpenAI to begin with. So he's all in on Grok. He's not going to tolerate this not being one of the best, if not the best. So we're just early days. Um, I'll keep you posted. All right. Bye.